this is Flaming Sword Talk Show, and thank you for joining us again on this week's episode. And remember, the theme is Light in Darkness. I am your host. My name is Irene Dean, actually. And, well, we have a special guest today, and I know that you guys are familiar with him. Maybe not all of you, but most of you. I mean, all of you should know him. But um, I do have here our brother, um, Joshua Bamilouye. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here. Um, you know, I say light and darkness. I'm going to read some scriptures um, really quickly and then we're going to dive into it. So just feel free to talk. No okay, problem. got it. All right. So I will be reading real quick. Um, it's going to be Matthew, the book of Matthew, um, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to be reading verse 14 to 16. Verse 14 to 16. And it says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a, lap, on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16 says, um, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the first one I'm going to read. I'm going to read one more and then we'll dive into it. I'm gonna read. Um, I'm gonna read the NLT version. This is gonna be Isaiah, sixty, um, one to three. It says, "Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nation of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you." Verse three says, "All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance." Amen. All right, so let me ask, um, when you hear light in darkness, what's the first thing that pops into your head? A source of light. A source of light? A lamp, candle, okay. lantern. Okay, lantern. Yes. Yeah, lantern. Okay, all right, so let me ask you, um, what, is, what is light? Light is... Um, light... Has several meanings to me. Okay, let's. But let's go. the first and the most important reason I see light as is um, illumination. That is okay. enlightenment. That is um, seeing, That's understanding, mm -hmm. um, clarity. Right, right, right. And so on and so forth. That's really good because I think for me, I mean, I've always, I always saw light as you know. I mean, light. I mean, <laughs> not necessarily yeah. light. But when I think of light, I, I, you know, because I guess when you read the Bible, it's talking, we know it's talking about Jesus. Mm. But it wasn't until re recently that <clears throat> I understood that light is knowledge, kind of like you said, enlightenment. Mm. It's mm. understanding. And that's mm. really good. I'm glad that you said that. That, that is light. Um, now, let me ask another one <clears throat> before we go deeper into it. Um, so you said light is an enlightenment. So how can a person get this light? Because hmm. since we are speaking uh, metaphorically now, because uh, <laughs> I mean, if we are speaking, uh, go to the story, you see, you see like, right. <laughs> but, well, uh, yeah, okay. that's fine. Yes. But the, the light we are talking about, mm -hmm. how do you get this light? Mm -hmm. um, it's by acknowledging God in your life, okay. acknowledging Jesus in your life, acknowledging the power of who He is to you, mm -hmm. the power of what He has done on the cross, and um, yeah. That's how you. That's how you receive that light. That's how you get it. Okay. So that's that's great. That is true. So you first have to come to the, come to Christ pretty exactly. much and make Him your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. and then you know, you come into His light and you see light in His light. But and anyway, from there we go on to getting into His Word. Right. Right. Because I said His Word is a light onto our feet. And and light onto our back. Perfect. Back, so. That is great. So now, so we want to make it more practical. So. Okay. Now, as believers, based on the scripture that I just read, it says we are the light of the world. Mm. You know, and it says, you know, that when a lamp is in a, in a house or in a room, it's not meant to be hidden under a bushel or a basket. It's meant to give light to all those that are in the house, mm. in the home, mm. or wherever it is that the light is. Mm -hmm. So how, how can a, how are we meant to be this light? In the world and then I'll go to you personally mm -hmm. um, we are meant to be the light first of all by understanding why we are created okay knowing why we are created why did God create us why why are we on earth mm -hmm. 
Um, the minute we begin to understand why and we begin to understand our purpose, we begin to understand um, why God has created us, from there we begin to walk in that line and begin to fulfill that mandate. Because every no one is born by mistake, right. no one is born by accident. Mm -hmm. um, so the minute we begin to understand that, why was I created, what's the purpose, what's function, what goal, what vision has God given to me, the minute we begin to, to see that, we begin to exercise that light. Okay, that's great. So I think another thing, what kind of stands out to me again is the part, I think I just mentioned it, that says, you know, when a light is in a room, it gives a light to all those that are in there. Mm. I think that is amazing because it, what pops in my head is, for example, um, maybe being at a workplace, mm. um, you know, by my light, because I carry Christ in me, everyone that is around me by my works, by my character, by the things that I do, maybe they're doing things that are against the rule of the company or something and mm -hmm. because I won't do the same thing, you mm -hmm. know, with that I'm sharing, you know, my light is shining, they're looking at me like, okay, why aren't you doing it? But it's saying something to them, yes. you know, I see it that way. So let me ask for you, so I mean, we know that, you know, mm -hmm. we know you're, you're, you're Mount Zion, you're not Mount Zion, but you're, <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're part of Mount Zion, you yes. know what I'm saying? And you know, you guys are doing an amazing thing because I always yeah. recommend your movies um, to people. To I mean, there's a lot of um, people that I have around me where I'm like, oh, okay, this is what you're going through. And then when I think about them, I'm like, oh, no, watch this movie. I send it to them, watch this movie. Make sure you watch it. Let mm -hmm. me know what you think about it. Things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's amazing. So how, let me say, if you can give like a practical example of... Um, you know, other than what I've mentioned in your own personal life, because I know yeah. that as a, well, I believe you're single. I don't say my <laughs> yeah. yet, but as a single um, young man, you know, I know that for I think they call, I guess our generation millennials, mm. or, or you know, so I know the world has gone so much darker, and mm -hmm. even even when you when you try to do the right thing, when you're trying to stand out for mm -hmm. God. You know, a lot of people look at you and think of you like, oh, please, you're doing too much. You're too spiritual. Mm -hmm. Your own is too much. Mm -hmm. So how, how have you been doing it? How mm -hmm. have you been a light? Um, that, that it's, it's a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it starts from childhood. It starts okay. from secondary school. Mm -hmm. Because from in, in primary school, you might not really... So, I mean, understanding that that difference between light and darkness, primary school might be shallow, it might be, it might be, it might be soft, mm -hmm. but in secondary school, it, became, it becomes very defined. Right, right. From secondary school, you begin to know what is, this is good, this is bad, this isn't right, this is right, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it starts from there. I, at the point where I was re reaching my um, adolescent stage, when the whole um, relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend thing started, it's, it's from there that I knew, okay, this is where... And I mean, at, at first, the excitement was already driving me to the wrong side, you know, <laughs> right, but right. At, to the glory of God and through, from God, through my parents, thanks to God through my parents, mm -hmm. I was able to come back on track. And from there, you know, it starts from there. And when people begin to identify you in a certain way, mm -hmm. if I, of course, the temptations will come, right, but because right. you've already, you've already, in a way, given yourself an identity as this is who you are. Mm -hmm. Those things will also put you in check, you know, like in the university now, some guys were watching some things in my room and then I was like, oh, what are you guys are like, ah, no, you can't see this, oh, ah, you know, I mean, they, they know what I'm wearing. Right, right, right. So right. they won't bring it, so I was like, what is it, no, ah, no, it's not for, it's not for you, you know, <laughs> exactly, so right. um, when you begin to make your identity known, because mm -hmm. a lot of people hide that, in fact, a lot of people hide who they are, who they are, who they are supposed to Bush out. That's what exactly. you say. When you are putting the lights in the, in the bush, yeah. no one knows. So anything, when anything comes, it sways you. You know, but mm -hmm. when you make your stand on this, is who I am in Christ, this is what I do. This is why I'm created, and you let everybody know. It also causes its momentum as you right. keep pushing for it. The momentum also keeps pushing, and God keeps giving the grace to. Yeah, that's that's amazing because I know I, you know I don't know what it is now because even you see that a lot of young Christians. Um, now, I'm not saying necessarily saying the ones that are, you know, seeking and hungry, you know, hungry, hungry for God and really want to do his will. But 
I guess people that have been sedimented into Christianity. I don't mm, know if that's the right way to mm, say it. Mm. You know, um, it's a pain in my heart because I see, you know, again, it says we're meant to be a light. You know, mm. we're meant to show people how it's meant, how they're supposed to live, how, you know, to shine our light. We should let Jesus shine through us. But however, you see that, you know, a lot of Christians now, rather than shining, it seems like now we're wanting to, you know, use darkness to, is it, I'm trying to find the right word, use darkness to entice darkness mm. instead of rather than mm. being the light. Yes. So it's, it's more like we're trying to conform or trying to change mm -hmm. our standards mm -hmm. to yeah. the worldly standards so that we can bring them bring in, when, in rather yeah. than us being, you know, when we're among them or when we're in their midst, our ways are supposed to let them know that, okay, this is not how I'm supposed to do it. This is how I'm mm -hmm. supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. Because people won't know that, you know, yeah. unless we, we are doing exactly what it is that we're meant to do. Yeah. So that that's a great example because you're right. You know, that, I think that's um, a great temptation because I know for me in college, I, um, I remember when I believe God was drawing me more because, again, I grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christian home. Mm -hmm. um, and... I know when God was drawing, drawing me closer and uh, closer to Him, um, before I would go to the club and things mm -hmm. like that, and you know, but slowly I just started to kind of lose interest for it. And the more that I, mm -hmm. you know, God started drawing me closer, I had friends around me mm -hmm. that we, we would go to club together. But one mm -hmm. day I decided, you know what, <laughs> this is a waste of my time. <clears throat> like, what am I gaining from it? Mm -hmm. It's not benefiting me in any way. I decided, okay. I don't want to go to the club anymore. I'm mm -hmm. just not going to do it. And, um, you know, I didn't think that people were, I didn't, I didn't know that people were actually seeing the change mm -hmm. that was going on inside of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as the change was going on inside, it was starting to reflect in my character and the things mm -hmm. that I would do and the choices that I would make. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, when light comes, darkness flees. Yes. And so all the people that were around me, I'm not calling you darkness. <laughs> I'm just saying, all I'm saying, I'm just trying to explain something. But, you know, people that were around me that were not looking to live that type of lifestyle for mm. God, they started to fade away. They started to kind of yes. leave. And yes. what God started to bring people that were, yes. you know, seeking for the same thing as I was. Now, I want to ask you a question because I know that you are, you do a lot with music. Yes. Right. So... What I know the kind of music that you do is, is more even towards it talks about different things, encourages, um, you know, it tells a story mm. about it's all basically for the kingdom of God. Yes. What made you um besides maybe for also for Mount Zai, but what made you choose the style of music that you do and and, and yeah, what made you what made you do that? Um my approach to well, let me say my introduction to music came from a very unusual angle mm -hmm. i didn't come into music from the angle of wanting to release songs and um sing on stage mm -hmm. and my approach came through drama you know um <clears throat> before i was into music m movies so songs for movies were done through dad mom in the studio mm -hmm. and i'd observed i'd watched so when it when when the time came and I learned the keyboard in primary school and then I kept on playing in secondary school, as time passed, um, Dad encouraged me to give it a try. So I gave it a try for the first time with the keyboard and then from there on and on. That was just three SS one. That's like grade nine. Okay. Grade, right. grade nine. Right. So from there, and then so first it was sound, making sound and understanding how sound applies to a movie. Okay. So when you're Producing a sound, you're producing a sound that 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 further pushes what this movie is talking about, mm -hmm. and that's sound. Yeah. And from sound, which is instrumental sound, mm -hmm. it it's uh, graduated to sound instrument and sound of voice, minus lyrics. Okay. So it's just chants and shouts and hums and all that that further push this movie, and from there it now graduated into lyrics. Okay. So lyrics, my songs usually tell a story, pass across a message. Um, I'm not really the type that ten albums and everything is about praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. <laughs> yeah, that is fine. But mine is 
Message one, this is what I'm talking about. Message two, we're talking about this, we're talking about this, we're talking about this. all of course for the kingdom expansion. What is your purpose with your messages? The purpose of my message, if it's for a movie, it is you know, my songs most of ninety percent of the time comes after the movie. Okay. For these instrumentals and the sound and the sound effects, those are in the movie. So while the movie is going on, this music is having is giving it a, a, a more effect to your heart. So when something is going on, you are watching it, but the music is also adding more to the effect it's going to have. But for the end credits, it is now like now, the movie is over and it is there. Let us now solidify that message in your heart. Right, right, right. So when a song is playing, you are not just hearing a song about, about the praise and worship kind of song. No, you are hearing a song that has, you've seen the message now, you've, heard, you've watched the movie. Now, hear a sound that further punches that message into your heart. I like that you said that, you know, to further solidify the mm. message in your heart. So where I'm going with this is music is powerful. It is. And um, I mean, it's very obvious that the kingdom of darkness uses that as a tool to entice people to mm -hmm. pass across their own message, to draw people to their side and to do things, manipulate people to do the things that they want them to do. Mm. Now, you know, I'm just thinking of light because again, like I said, music is powerful. Now, Based on what you said, you kind of answered what I was going to ask you, but um, I'm trying to find the right way to, to say this, but how, you know, apart from what you just said, how do you think that in our time, how do you think we can use, besides what you said, how do you think we can use this tool of music? Because I, I know that our, you know, let me not say that our generation, many people, hmm. different generations were very drawn to this thing called music. Now, the kingdom of darkness is using it for a, a, a bad purpose, but mm. whereas, you know, again, we're the light. So, mm. like you said, the, the whatever songs we're singing is to pass across the message. There's, mm -hmm. Of course, there's nothing wrong with saying praise God, praise God, but mm -hmm. again, it's a tool mm -hmm. to pass across the message mm -hmm. into the hearts of people. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how to ask this question, <laughs> <laughs> but my main thing is, how do you think that one can further um, use the tool of music? in shining light besides even because of music purposes mm -hmm. yeah how do you think one can further use that use um, music? Uh, I w it's I w the, my answer would kind of cut across okay. gifts in general okay i i think we all have gifts right we all have talents so let's say we all have talents mm -hmm. when you're born there is something that you can do better than the average person right. it's one thing and if we don't surrender it to God, mm -hmm. we might not be able to unlock that the purpose of that thing. Mm -hmm. It is okay. I can sing, and then I start singing um, just by myself, and then oh, the nice song. So you listen to my song. Oh, very nice, very nice. And when I'm singing the song, you know, you're having goosebumps. Very nice music. Once the music ends, you've forgotten. That's the end. Of course, you enjoyed my music because it was it was above the ordinary, but it had no effect in your life. So when we surrender this gift to God, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. God is the only one that can breathe his breath of life into his God. I mean, he's the one who put that gift there. So mm -hmm. he knows what he wants to do for. So for music now, and that's what many of our uh, music ministers do not understand. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do, but a lot of people also don't. Mm -hmm. A lot of people start, they know that they have this gift, mm -hmm. but then they now look around. How do they do it? How is it done? Oh, okay, this is how it's done. Okay, let me do mine that way too. We don't want to go to God and say, okay, you've given me, but how do you want me to Exactly. To, exactly. to, in, use, to use this? So in my own case now, it is for film and, you know, some people have asked me, why aren't you singing this? I say, this, this that wasn't how God called me. <laughs> that was, you know, so this is my own way. So when we unlock that, it, 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 it makes an, a simple catapult, you know, to kill Goliath. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think that's amazing. Um, you're right. Because, you know, another thing is, you know, with us being like again where it's meant to kind of separate us from from the rest of the world yes but you kind of see and you tend to see that you know even like you said music ministers in the body of christ rather than us like you said going back to god and saying okay you gave me this gift how do you want me to use it mm -hmm. you know you know what sound would you like what you know what instrument would you like how would you want it everything because mm -hmm. it seems like people think that we cannot go to god for things details mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. but you actually can yes. but rather we tend to it seems like people are are taking the things of the world mm -hmm. and you know now 
manipulating it and mm -hmm. putting a stamp on it. Whereas mm -hmm. we're supposed to, again, enlighten. We're supposed mm -hmm. to show the world how mm -hmm. it is that the world is meant to live. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, it, it's scary. And it, <laughs> it's not the way that, you know, we should be living. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, that, that, I guess that's my, that, that's my own take on that. Is rather than us being conforming to their ways, it's, it's meant for us. So everything that God has given us, is so that we can shine the light to yes. the world and let the world know this is how it's done. Yes. We don't all have to be the same. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. you said, God, whatever God gives you, if there's something unique about each individual. And whatever that uniqueness is in your life is meant to be to glorify God, yes. you know, as, as a believer. Yes. And, um, you know, before we round up, what is, uh, what, what is, what do you want to say to the audience? Is there something that you want to say to someone out there? Hmm. Okay, based on um, the the show's name, which is Light in Darkness, in darkness um, whatever we do, whatever situation we find ourselves, let us let us seek God for that extra mile. Let us seek God for that that extra thing that separates us. Light can never light trying to be like darkness will eventually go dim. Right. But when we yeah. seek for more of God, when we seek for um, our identity in Him, let us let us continue to seek for identity in Him, because that is where we will begin to find what will actually make us that light. Because right. um, it's one thing to be a Christian and to go to church and to just say I'm a Christian, but mm -hmm. what are you doing that will where well, will distinguish you? So let's go with that assignment. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And thank you for joining us again. And see you next time in the next episode. You have a blessed day. Um.